dear children how are you all okay in this class we are going to revise for our upcoming unit test okay do you know the questions for your unit test yes two lessons okay first lesson is chemical reactions and equations and second lesson is acid bases and salts okay here is the pattern here is your question pattern see here short answer you will be giving short answer for 15 marks okay each question carries 3 marks totally 15 marks next detail answer for 10 marks each question carries 5 marks okay totally you are going to write your unit test for 25 marks okay students do you ready okay next we are going to revise the 3 marks for this chemical reactions and equation lessons okay let us go okay how a chemical reaction takes place they can ask how a chemical reaction takes place a chemical reaction takes place by change in state change in color change in temperature and evolution of gas in this four ways a chemical reaction takes place do you understand students how a chemical reaction takes place change in state what is the example for change in state we can take a ice cube if we take a ice cube from the fridge after few minutes the ice cube will changes into water the solid ice cube will changes into liquid so this is the example for change in state change in color we are discussed in activity 1.2 do you remember we have taken two kinds of salt two salts are in white color that combining these two salts given a yellow color okay this is an example for change in color and change in temperature and evolution of gas we have discussed in activity 1.3 do you understand students next what is skeletal equation the second question is what is skeletal equation the equation is unbalanced because the mass is not same on both side of the equation whether in the equation the mass is not balanced so that we call the equation as a skeletal equation do you understand the example of skeletal equation is magnesium plus oxygen give magnesium oxide see here here one magnesium here also one magnesium here two oxygen but here only one oxygen so this equation is not balanced so that these kind of equation we call it as a skeletal equation do you understand what is skeletal equation okay next what is combination reaction two or more reactants combine together and forms a single product two or more reactants combine together to give a single product we call that reaction is called as a combination reaction for example see here calcium oxide plus water here we are taking two reactants but these two reactants combine together and give only a single product that is calcium hydroxide so this kind of equation we call it as a combination reaction or combination equation going to see what is decomposition reaction in this reaction the single reactants has the heating it gives two or three products okay what is decomposition reaction the single reactants has the heating it gives two or three products that reaction we call it as a decomposition reaction okay next what is displacement reaction see here iron is displaced or removed and combined with so folks see here here this iron yes c is removed or displaced with this sulfate okay whenever one element come removed and combined with another element that we call it as a displacement reaction do you understand here in this example iron is removed and combined with this sulfate and forms iron sulfate okay whenever 
one reactant removed and combined with another reactant that we call it as a displacement reaction do you understand next double displacement reaction explain or explain double displacement reaction any reaction that produces a precipitate or insoluble if we add two solution it is insoluble that solution we call it as a double displacement solution or precipitate solution the double displacement solution is otherwise called as a precipitate solution whenever if we add two chemicals if it is insoluble that reaction we call it as a precipitate reaction or double displacement reaction for example see here here sodium sulfate this is sodium sulfate see here this sodium is combining with chlorine and give sodium chloride and this barium is combined with sulfate and gives barium sulfate in this equation the two times the two times the elements are displaced whenever the elements are displaced two times or two times that we call it as a double displacement reaction in this in this equation the uh, sodium is combined with chlorine and barium is combined with sulfate two times the elements of this place so we call it as a double displacement reaction do you understand students what is oxidation when a copper is heated with the presence of oxygen it forms copper oxide see here a copper is heated with the presence of oxygen and forms copper oxide in this case oxygen is added to copper see here oxygen is added to copper whenever any substances that added to a oxygen that we call it as a oxidation reaction or else we can simply say oxidation means addition of oxygen addition of oxygen we call it as a oxidation reaction we understand what is oxidation reaction what is reduction see here copper oxide is heated with hydrogen and gives copper plus water see here in this case oxygen is removed from this copper oxide and becomes copper whenever oxygen is removed that reaction we call it as a reduction reaction you understand what is reduction reaction whenever oxygen is removed that reaction we call it as a reduction reaction okay do you understand next what is redox reaction see a copper oxide plus h2 is heated and it gives copper plus h2o see here in this case oxygen is removed from copper oxide and changes into copper what i say whenever oxygen is removed that reaction we call it as a reduction reaction see simultaneously this h2 is combining with oxygen whenever oxygen is added that reaction we call it as what that reaction we call it as a oxidation reaction in what is redox reaction means in a single equation or a single equation both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously that reaction we call it as a redox reaction in a single equation both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously that reaction we call it as a oxidation reaction reduction reaction that we call it as a redox reaction do you understand next explain the term rancidity you should explain the term rancidity rancidity means what spoil rancidity means spoil when oils and fats are oxidized or even allowed to stand for long time okay if the food is allowed to stand for long time then the food get rancid so we should not eat the food for a long time okay if we keep what happens the food get rancid okay next we can observe the rancidity of the food by how we can observe the rancidity of food by two conditions change of taste of food if we eat the food there will be change in taste 
Next, second condition is bad smell of the food. If you go near the food, it will come some bad smell. From these two conditions, you can confirm that the food get rancid. Do you understand how to observe the rancidity of the food? Next, explain the term corrosion. You should explain the term corrosion. See, a white iron nail changes with the help of oxygen and moisture. It will change into reddish brown color. A white iron nail, after few days or a few months, it changes into reddish brown color. Why? Because with the help of oxygen and moisture, the white iron nail changes into this reddish brown color. The uh, white iron nail changes into reddish brown color. So that reddish brown color is called as a corrosion or corroded particles. Do you understand what is corrosion? Okay. How we can prevent corrosion? By using three steps, we can easily prevent this corrosion. By anti-rusting solution. By using anti-rusting solution, tinning and electroplating, we can easily prevent the corrosion. Do you understand how to prevent the corrosion? Next, we are going to discuss the detail answer of the lesson chemical reaction and equation. First, explain how a chemical reaction takes place and explain with activity. They are asking how a chemical reaction takes place. We have already discussed in three marks of how a chemical reaction takes place. By change in state, change in color, increase in temperature and evolution of gas. For that you should write the examples. For all that four, you should write the examples. Okay. And you should explain the activity. We have discussed, already discussed in previous classes. No? The three activity. Activity 1.2, 1.2. 2 and 1.3. All these three activities you should explain. Okay. Next, second question. Write the steps involved to balance a chemical reaction. We should write the steps. What are all the steps that involve to balance a reaction or a chemical reaction? What are all the steps? There are three steps. Okay. In first step, what we should do means we should write the unbalanced equation. They are asking to balance the equation. First step is what? We should write the unbalanced equation. In second step, what we should do means you should separate the elements, the elements in the reactants and elements in the product. You should list, list down the element which is present in the reactants and the elements which is present in the products. This is the second step. Third step is you should start to balance the equation. Okay, in this way you should balance the equation. Okay. Next, explain all the types of chemical reaction with two or three examples. They are asking to explain all the types of chemical reaction. What are all the types of chemical reaction? There are four types of chemical reaction. What are they? Combination reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction and decomposition reaction. Okay. First you should list down these are all the types of chemical reaction and you should explain what is combination reaction with two, at least two or three examples and displacement and double displacement and decomposition. Okay, then only they will give five marks. Okay. Next, explain the term rancidity and corrosion. You should explain, we are, this also we have discussed in three marks. You should explain what is rancidity, how we can prevent rancidity. You should write next or next what is corrosion, how we can easily prevent corrosion. Okay, in this way you should explain the term rancidity and corrosion and its prevention. Do you understand? Do you understand the detailed answer of the lesson? We are going to devise the three marks for second lesson acid, bases and salts. Okay, first question. How do acids and bases react with metals? Or else, what happens when acid and metals react with metals? Okay. See, an acid react with metals. See, H2SO4 is the acid. If zinc is the metal. The acid is react with metal. It gives salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay. What happens when the acid is combined with metal and gives salt and hydrogen gas. Okay. This is the example for the acid that react with metals. Do you understand? Next. 
Bases react with metals. What happens when bases react with metals? Or else what product we can obtain? Okay. See here. NaOH is a base. How are you saying it is a base? Because it, the, it there is OH is present. Okay. So that I am calling it is a base. The base is react with metals. See it is a metal. A base react with metal and same it gives salt plus hydrogen. What it give? It gives salt plus hydrogen. Okay. What happens when acid react with metals? It gives salt and hydrogen gas. Whereas bases react with metals, it gives salt plus only hydrogen. Here hydrogen gas, here hydrogen. Do you understand how do acid and bases react with metals? Okay. Next, how do acid and bases react with each other? Or else, what happened when acid or base react with each other? That is the question. See here, acid. HCl is an acid. You all know HCl is an acid. This react with base. OH is a so I am calling it is a base. Acid and base combine together to give salt and water. What happened when acid or base combine together? It combine together and gives salt plus water. Do you understand? And this reaction, this acid and base, combination of acid and base, you salt and reaction water. This reaction we call it as a neutralization reaction. Okay? What we call it as in this reaction? This reaction is called it as a neutralization reaction. Do you understand? Next, explain the reaction of metallic oxide with acid. They are asking to explain the reaction of metallic oxide with Acid. What happens? The reaction between metallic oxide with acids. See here, CuO, copper oxide is a metal oxide. Okay, what happens? It reacts with acid. Same, it gives salt and water. What happens when metal oxide reacts with acid? It gives salt and water. Do you understand? Next, explain the non metallic oxide with base. They are asking what happens when non metallic oxide react with base. For example, see here carbon dioxide. They are taking carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a non metal oxide. It is combined with calcium hydroxide. It is a base. What happens when non metallic oxide react with base? Same product is acquired that is salt plus water. You understand? A non-metal is combined with base, it gives salt and water. Do you understand? Okay. Next, what is dilution? What is dilution? This also we have discussed in previous classes. What is dilution? To reduce the concentration or the power of the acid, we are diluting the acid. See here, mixing an acid or a base. Mixing an acid or a base with water. What happens if we mix acid or a base with water? It results that decrease in the concentration of ions. It will decrease, the water will decrease the power of the acid. Okay, this process is called as a dilution. Do you understand what is dilution? Next, what is pH scale? What is pH scale? A scale for measuring hydrogen ion concentration. To measure the hydrogen ion concentration in a particular solution or any solution that we call it as a pH scale. For that purpose, we are using this pH scale. For what purpose we are using the pH scale? To measure the hydrogen ion concentration. For that purpose, this pH scale is used. Okay. This pH scale contains set of numbers. Okay. 0 to 40. In the pH scale, there will be a set of numbers. 0 to 40 numbers will be there. Okay. If, the, if value less than 7, if value less than 7, we call the solution as an acidic solution. Okay. If the value is less than 7, that solution we call it as an acidic or acid solution. Okay. Next, value greater than 7. If the value greater than 7 means, you can say it is a basis solution or some basis present in that particular solution. Next, value 7. If there is no greater than 7 or less than 7, 
it is it is but it is a absolutely certain means you can confirm that it is a neutral solution it is not it is not an acid or an base it is a neutral solution next what are strong acid they are asking what are strong acid acid that ionize completely in the water acid that ionize that be completely soluble in water that we call it as a strong acid okay the example of strong acid is hcl okay you understand what is strong acid okay next what are strong base bases that ionize completely in water base that ionize completely in water that we call it as a strong base okay simultaneously what are strong bases the bases which completely ionize in the water that we call it as a strong base okay you understand next what is acid rain what is acid rain when ph of rain water is less than 5.6 then we call that rain is an acid rain what is acid rain is the ph of rain water is less than 5.6 so that we call it as a that rain we call it as a acid rain you understand next what is the ph of the solution in your backyard they are asking to find the ph of the solution in your backyard to find out how we can find out to find out the ph required for the healthy growth we can collect the soil we can collect the soil or sand from various places and if we calculate the average you can easily easily you can find the ph of the solution in your backyard you understand in this way you can easily find the ph solution of your backyard next what is the ph in our digestive system they are asking what is the ph in our digestive system our stomach produces hydrochloric acid our stomach produces what acid hydrochloric acid this why is uh, hydrochloric acid are present in our stomach because this acid helps in digestion of food okay it helps for digestion of the food for that purpose this hydrochloric acid present in our stomach and also without harming the stomach this hydrochloric acid is helpful for digestion of food why the tooth decay starts they are asking why or how a tooth decay starts tooth decay starts when the ph of the mouth is lower than 5.5 when the ph of the mouth is less than 5.5 then only the tooth decay starts okay how we can prevent this tooth decay the best way to prevent the tooth decay is to clean the mouth after eating after eating if we clean the mouth we can easily prevent from this tooth decay okay next how you can find the ph of the salt how you can find the ph value of salt what we should do first collect the samples of salt we can collect the samples different kind of salt for example sodium chloride zinc chloride for example we can collect the different samples of salt that is first case next second check the air solubility next next we can check the solubility of the salt by how by using distilled water we can check the solubility this is second case third and last we can find the ph value by using ph scale by using ph scale you can easily find the ph value of the salt how sodium chloride salt is prepared how this sodium chloride is prepared combination of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide by combining the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide we can easily get this sodium chloride in this way we can easily prepare this sodium chloride salt okay next explain a common salt a raw material for chemicals explain a common salt a raw material for chemicals common salt is obtained from various material of dairy use this common salt is obtained from 
various materials or daily uses. What are the daily, uh, daily uses? Such as sodium hydroxide, baking soda, washing soda, etc. These are all the various materials that can the common salt is obtained. Okay, do you understand? Next, how sodium hydroxide are prepared? How the sodium hydroxide are prepared? When electricity is passed through a solution of sodium chloride, when we are giving electricity in a sodium chloride, this sodium chloride decomposes and forms the sodium hydroxide. In this way, this sodium hydroxide are prepared. Do you understand? Write the chemical name for the following. Okay? Write the chemical name for the following. Common salt. What is the chemical name of common salt? Yes, sodium chloride is the chemical name of common salt. Second, what is the chemical name of bleaching powder? Calcium hypochlorite. Calcium hypochlorite is the chemical name of bleaching powder. Okay, next baking soda. The chemical name of baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. Last, washing soda. The chemical name of washing soda is sodium carbonate. What is sodium carbonate? Is the chemical name of washing soda. We are going to discuss the detailed answer of the lesson acid bases and salt. First question. What do all acid and bases have in common? Or else, what is commonly acid and base? Okay. For that, take a page number 22. They are performing an activity. You should, uh, you should explain that activity detailedly. Okay. For example, what they are doing? They are taking a hydrochloric acid and first dropping some hydrochloric acid in that polycarbonate flask. What happens? The bulb starts blowing. Okay. Next, second, what they are doing? They are pouring some glucose. And again, they are switch on the switch. The bulb does not blows. For that, what they are trying to say is, only in case of acid, only the bulb started to blows. In case of base, the bulb does not started to blows. Okay? See, in the page number 22, you should draw this diagram and you should explain by all this or by using this glucose, alcohol, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. Then, then only they will provide full mass. Okay? Next, second question. What happens to an acid or base in a water solution? They are, ask, they are asking what happens when acid or base in a water solution? It is in page number 23. See, the experiment suggested that hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion in HCl are produced in the presence of water. Only in the presence of water, the, we can remove the HCl from hydrogen. Okay. In absence of water, we can't separate that HCl from that hydrogen. Okay. Next, hydrogen ion cannot exist alone. It cannot be exist alone. But they exist after combining with water molecules. Only it combined with water molecule, it will exist and give hydronium ion. That is H3O+. Okay. Do you, do you understand? Next. We have to see that the acid gives H3O plus ions or H plus ions in the water. What happened for the base? If we want to separate NaOH, okay, it is a base. NaOH is a base. Why I am saying it is a base? Because OH is present. So that I am saying it is a base. If we want to separate Na and OH, what you should do? Only with the help of water, we can separate that Na plus OH minus. Okay. Without absence of water, we can't be able to separate that Na and OH. Only with presence of water, we can separate that Na and OH. Do you understand? This is the uh, what happened to an acid or base in a water solution. You should explain it in detail. You should explain. Okay. Next third question. How baking soda is prepared? How baking soda is prepared? And explain their uses. What you should do? You should write how the baking soda are prepared. You should write its steps. How the baking soda are prepared. And also you should explain their uses. 
you should explain the uses of baking soda. Okay, same. How the washing soda is prepared? How the washing soda is prepared? That you should write and you, you, should, you should also write the uses. Uses of washing soda. Next, explain plaster of Paris in detail. You should explain the plaster of Paris in a detailed form. You should write the example of plaster of Paris, name of plaster of Paris. Okay, you should explain in detail. Okay, do you understand the uh, detail answer of the lesson? Okay, students, do you understand all the three marks and five marks of the lessons? Okay, prepare well for your unit test. Okay, try to get 25 out of 25. For unit test, you should write in a ruled, unruled paper. Okay, you should use a unruled paper. Write the name and standard on the top of the paper. Okay, students, all the best for your exam. Thank you.